welcome to another Thrive Architect tutorial. This one is about the scroll behavior option, which basically allows you to make various elements stick to the screen, even if they would normally not be in viewport. So for example, we can make a button stick to the screen, even though I'm scrolling down to a section of my page where the button would not be visible anymore. So this option is available for buttons, images, container types of elements such as content boxes, background sections, group columns, and so on. And for those elements for which this option is applicable, you will be able to view this option listed in the left sidebar. So let's see how this works on a button element. So let me just drag and drop the button to my page. And now I can go ahead and select the scroll behavior section of my left sidebar list of options. Now, as you can see by default, the behavior on scroll is set to static, which means that the button does not move when you scroll down. If I go ahead and select sticky, then another set of options will become available in the left sidebar. These settings can be used to make your elements sticky on scroll. So first of all, you have to decide on which devices this state should be visible and applied. You can select just some of these devices or you can apply this behavior on all of them. This is entirely up to you. Next, you can choose if the elements should stick to the top or to the bottom of the screen. Let's leave it to the top at the moment and then decide on the distance from the top of the screen by dragging this slider from left to right. So when you set the distance from the top or from the bottom, the element will be sticky on the screen at the distance that you've set right here with this slider or by inserting a value in this field. Next comes the part where you configure until which point from your page you would like to keep this sticky behavior. So you can open this drop down list and see that you have three options you can choose from. The default behavior is until the end of the page. So this means that if you leave this one selected, the element will be sticky and will remain in viewport until the visitors scroll down to the end of the page. Let me just show you how this would look like for any visitor who's accessing your website. I'm just gonna save my work and then preview this page. And now if we scroll down, you will notice that the button will be in viewport until I reach the end of my page. Next, the following option you can choose here is to keep the button sticky until the end of the parent container. And this means that if this button is placed in another container, which would be the parent container, then it will be displayed on the page until the parent container passes the viewport. So let me just drag and drop this button in this content box. And now make sure this option is selected. Save my work and preview my page once more. And now if I scroll down, the element will only be visible until the parent container, which was the content box with this text and icon will remain in viewport. After that point onwards, the button will not be visible anymore. And then lastly, you have the option of applying the sticky behavior until the element reaches another element from your page. Basically, what you have to do here is to define another element as the parameter for the scroll behavior of your button in this case. Now you can see that a new field has appeared here and that is the element ID. And what this means is that here you have to fill in the ID of the element that you want to choose as your parameters. So in other words, I would like this button to stay in viewport until it reaches this icon from here. So what I need to do is to set the ID of this element from the HTML attributes section. Let's say my ID will be icon. And now I can go back to selecting the button element the scroll behavior section and here in the element ID, I'm just simply going to type in icon once more as this was the element ID that I've set for this icon. Now what should happen is that when I'm scrolling down the page, the button will be in viewport until it reaches the icon from here. This is how it looks like on the front end. So the button was only kept in viewport until it reached the same height as the element for which I set the element ID and I've set it as my parameter. So these were the options that you can configure when applying the sticky behavior on scroll on a button element. Now let's see how to use the parallax feature, which is the last one from this set of options. So I'm just going to select it from here. And now with this help of this option, I can add various parallax effects to different elements from my page. And if you want to find detailed information on how to use the parallax effects, please check out this separate step-by-step -step tutorial that I've linked here to the top right corner of this video. So let's add an effect to the button and configure it from this set of options that appears in this pop-up. So the effect that I'm going to be adding is a rotate one. I'm going to leave the rotation to the left. Let's increase the speed to five. Here, this lets us know that 
by using this slider, you will set the viewport region where the parallax effect will actually take place. So the start position is the distance from the bottom of viewport, while the end position is distance from the top. I'm gonna leave the settings as they are at the moment, click on apply, and then save my work and preview it once more. So this is the behavior of the button when the rotate parallax feature is added to it. You will notice that after you add an effect to your element, it will be listed right here. And whenever you want to edit it, you can simply click on this pencil icon, which will open this pop-up once more, or you can simply remove it from this trash icon. Let's see another effect available in this list. Let's go for the horizontal scroll, keep the type to the right, click once more on apply. And you can see that I have this toggle here, which says parallax preview. And this means that you will basically be able to see how the parallax effect would look like on your element while you are still in the editor. So you don't have to save and preview the page in order to view how this would look like on the front end. The last thing I would like to mention here is that if you want, you can apply multiple effects to your element. You simply have to add a new effect from here. You will notice that the one that is already selected and applied will not be available anymore, but you can choose another one from this list, configure it from the remaining options, and this way you can apply multiple parallax effects to your elements. After you finish setting up the scroll behavior option for this element, just save your work and preview it to make sure you are happy with the changes you've made so far on the element on which you've applied this behavior. Now I hope you found this video useful and as always make sure to check out our knowledge base for more tutorials and videos of this type.